This is the Hello and welcome to another episode of XFL Extra Point Extra. I'm Thomas, and today we have another great interview given to us by Reagan from at XFL Down Under. That's at XFL Down Under on Twitter. Make sure you give him a follow. Uh, today's interview will be Christian Sicoli. He's a defensive tackle for the DC Defenders and avid lifter of stones. Uh, once again, this is from Reagan at XFL Down Under. You can follow us at XFL Extra Point on Twitter or email us at extrapointcontact at gmail.com. Let's get right into the interview. Hi, Christian. It's Reagan from XFL Down Under. How you doing, mate? Hey, Reagan. What's up, man? I'm doing well. That's good to hear, bro. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, sorry about uh, yesterday, man. I had a bit of uh, lady issues. <laughs> That's okay, man. No problem. <laughs> Um, so yeah, bro, I'll just get straight into it for you, um, if you don't mind. No problem. Um, awesome. So, uh, Christian, um, th- thanks again for giving me the chance to, um, have you on the podcast, but, um, yeah, definitely tell us about yourself, how you got to where you are now. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your podcast. Are you guys in Australia? I gotta ask. Uh, yeah, so I'm in Australia at the moment, um, and I help out a couple guys in America, so... Bit of uh, international awesome, uh, international work. <laughs> Sweet. Wait, so you, you, you do the podcast with guys that are in America as well? Uh, so I do the I do the interviews for them. So I get to I oh, get to nice. wake up at uh one AM, two AM all the fun times. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. What time is it in Australia right now? Uh, it is currently twenty past one, but I've been up since midnight. Oh, so wait, it's one AM right now over there. Yep. <laughs> That's crazy. So now I should I should probably know this, but are you uh, ahead of us or behind us time wise? Uh, okay. we're uh, we're ahead of you. So it's currently Monday. Oh wow! So you know how you guys get That's Sunday great. night That's, football? You're you're, four, you're like four, you're like fifteen hours ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I'm calling from the future. Wow! <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna say. <laughs> That's good. That's so good. essentially, your your Sunday night NFL games are our. Basically, uh-huh. Monday morning games. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. To... Monday morning football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder Australians are crazy. Yes. Nah, I don't even know if you are. <laughs> I mean, I mean, my wife probably is. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, well, that's in America too, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that's everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> nice. Um, but hey, uh... So, so starting things off, Christian... Um, now you obviously the, probably the first ever Albanian professional NFL player and probably XFL player. Is that right? Yes, that, that's right. As far as I know, and uh, <laughs> to, yeah, to give you my story a little bit that you asked, I was born in Albania and I came to America at nine years old. Uh, mm-hmm. My my parents moved here a couple of years before, and me and my brother were very grateful that we got to you know kind of grow up here and get the, you know the opportunities that America affords and tried to. Tried to make the most of it coming from Albania. We still visit Albania all the time and uh, proud of where we come from. Yep. So eight, age nine. So I guess um, Albania is pretty much uh, that. That's mainly soccer, isn't it? It is. It, it is it. mainly soccer. And uh, what, what I made you? Uh, up too, actually. Sorry, mate. I played soccer growing up. That was kind of my first love, and then I think. I realized I got pretty big for soccer, but I could have maybe played goalkeeper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a large goalkeeper is definitely helpful. Uh, yeah. so what, ma- what made yeah, you want to play football then? Uh, initially, I said I started watching my cousin playing it, and he kind of pushed me towards the sport. And then uh, once I tried it in seventh grade, well, I was pretty bad. In seventh grade, I was probably the worst kid in the team, literally just, you know, getting into football in general is usually not easy for anybody. I think it's a pretty... <laughs> You know, especially on a line, offensive line, defensive line, it's a pretty unnatural sport, I'd say. Yep. So it was, it was a struggle in seventh grade, but I still thought it was, I, I still enjoyed it as a sport, you know, and I, I like watching, you know, the NFL game. And I, you know, I, you know, I knew the big players in the league and, you know, similar things that motivate most, you know, little kids. But I think when I gave it another shot in eighth grade is when I really started to enjoy the sport and I, I was playing much better. I was get, starting to get the hang of the game and I was starting to really – enjoyed this, the, the the physical part and I just I think I loved how it was a very intense game in general you know like it had really high highs and you know low lows too and I don't know if you, I care for the low lows but 
I just like the intensity of the game. You know, I love soccer. I love all sports, but I just feel like um, the intense moments of football. I don't know that you, you know, you get them in soccer too, but it's just not the same kind of, or it wasn't for me at least, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've I've played soccer and I'm yeah. horrible at it, so I, I try to avoid that now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so That's how was, I guess and you're a bad soccer player you just say the sport sucks let me go on to something where I hit people yeah well <laughs> I, I play I play fullback and that's a lot easier than uh, soccer so <laughs> oh yeah oh you did nice it is a lot easier right seriously you just need some guts <laughs> yes essentially just uh, find someone and no, just I, grab my hand I still, uh, no I love soccer I still play actually I mean for fun like adult leagues and stuff you know just for fun like at 9 o'clock at night which I shouldn't almost but <laughs> Yeah, whatever keeps you fit. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of fit, I've actually yeah. um I've actually watched a fair few of your YouTube videos. Um, what what made you want to start oh, to get into the uh like I guess sort of filming your workouts? Um, thanks for checking those out. Uh, honestly, I me and my buddy Esteban, who I went to high school with, we kind of um reunited a little bit. I'm back back home where I where I grew up, and uh, he's living over here. He's doing this thing with Health Evolution, where he posts a bunch of workout videos. And I've always been into, like, random film, you know, like filming funny stuff or posting, you know, you know, goofy stuff or whatever. I, I just like it. I just see it as kind of a form of expression, so to speak. And I thought it'd be neat. And we, we had this idea of, like, what if we kind of, like, shared, you know, my journey back into football and how excited I am to get back into it. What if we shared that on the, you know, on, on the Internet? And maybe people will like it and uh, we'll get a following and... You know, the, the same old story, trying to be famous on the internet. <laughs> you know, I really, I really do enjoy it. It's fun. Like, I feel like, uh, you know, if I, I, I mean, if I can motivate people and uh, people can get some entertainment out of it, I, I definitely enjoy making a goof myself or, you know, lifting up 300-pound rocks and putting it up. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying it out. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're, you're about 300 pounds now anyway, so that's basically just doing a chin-up essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, two two ninety five right now. So I, I'm lifting my head, my body weight. I guess pretty good. <laughs> I struggle after ten push ups, so I think I might have to watch a few more of your videos. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You just you gotta start on episode one, by episode five, you'll be doing the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Uh, I don't advise that. I definitely, maybe Health Evolution, my buddy's YouTube channel, definitely something where you can do what he's doing and progress. I would not watch my rise and grind and try and do what I'm doing <laughs> from the start. I don't know. I'll, I'll hit the ground running. Screw it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, just start with hand clean heavy and just see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> my back gives out. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, why not? I, screw all the technical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so now you're with the DC Defenders. Um, how do you how yes. do you think having um, I guess a I'd I'd say as a legend um, Ray Hamilton as your D line coach and how's that going to help your progress as a football player? I think it's really cool, man. I think there's a lot of you know great great guys to work with you know in our team and you know Napoleon uh, Sykes, the defensive line coach, is a guy that. I was just at the Army game yesterday, actually, and uh, he had coached at Navy recently, and I heard great things about him, too. And obviously, I've heard great things about Coach Pep, and I'm just excited to get going. And it, it really is cool how, you know, players and coaches, there's plenty of names that are familiar, and it just goes to show you that, you know, there is a lot of us out here, and there's always been. I mean, with the NFL, it's such a competitive league. There's so many guys, I think, or, you know, a good amount of guys that, are so close or maybe are even there in a way. It's just they haven't gotten the right opportunities kind of. And, you know, there's talent out there, and it's just exciting to see see how it uh, see how it all shines this winter. I'm, I'm excited to see it, see it unfold, honestly. Absolutely. Well, unlike other players in the XFL, you actually had the opportunity to be also drafted in the NFL. Um, what's, what's the differences between the NFL and the XFL drafts? Well... For one, the NFL draft had a big, big party at my house and a bunch of family, and we celebrated, and it was awesome. Not that the XFL wasn't awesome, but with the XFL, I was uh, expect. I had my, it's funny, it's a unique, unique story a little bit. Uh, I had my cousin over, and I didn't want to make a big deal out of it, obviously, because, you know, it's cool when you get drafted in the NFL and you're 24 years old, but when you're 28 and people are looking for you to get a job now, move on from football, it's like, maybe I won't invite, you know, 30 family members over. <laughs> 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 oh, 
But uh, no, it was neat. I, I invited my cousin over, my girlfriend was over, and, and uh, the first day I didn't get drafted, and I kind of had a little bit of a hope that I'd get picked the first day, and I was like kind of bummed. I was like, oh, man, I thought I was better than that. I didn't get picked day one. And then uh, day two, didn't have any type of organization. I was like to my girlfriend, listen, if I get drafted, I'll let you know. I'm going to work, okay? <laughs> so I was uh, driving back to back from work at 4 o'clock, and uh, Greg Gabriel, who's a great guy, Buffalo native himself, and kind of scouted me from the, the descenders. He called me, and he's like, oh, we're picking you up here. And I was like, that's awesome, man. You know, And I, I just – it wasn't as emotional as the NFL. Obviously, it's a completely different thing, but – I really feel so fortunate, and I'm, I'm so excited to, to get a chance to uh, hang my Maryland suit up for a little bit, which I look forward to going back to someday, <laughs> you know, and getting the helmet back on is awesome. You know, I, I look forward to my career in finance, but I know that, you know, football is uh, it's sacred to me, and it's something that I know I won't be able to do for a long time in general, so I'm just excited to get get another shot at it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, it's, al- it's always fun to hit people, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly, right? With the- Plus, posting on YouTube about yes. you know, playing football is more exciting than posting about putting on a suit and going to work, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I did actually um, I did read that if football didn't work out, you would like to actually work in the stock exchange. Um, I mean, from the stock exchange and your financial stuff, is there any uh, crossover into your football skills? I think there is honestly you know it's, it's the uh, intangible skills that people talk about like you know work ethic and uh, a desire to kind of get up every day and work towards a common goal work towards a common goal you know group of people or just just the, the, that competitive fire and I've, I've always always grown drawn to the stock market I messed around in high school and college of stocks and not that I knew what I was doing but I was always drawn into it and I kind of like you know the competitive nature of it now listen I've realized plenty that it's not going to be what I expected, you know, from what I saw in the movies, <laughs> yep. but, uh, I, I do enjoy it. And I think it's, it's awesome, especially, you know, like, kind of like the work I want to do with financial advisor. It's, um, it's neat because you, you get a chance to work with a lot of people from what it seems like, not that I've really done it. I've done a couple of months and trained, but it seems I'll get a chance to work with a lot of people, but also I just like the idea of staying in tune with what's happening and reading about all types of things, you know, the economy and, you know, elections and, how, this, you know, how, how different industries are doing and how Europe is doing, you know, and how Australia is doing, right? Because <laughs> it's all connected. And I think that's kind of neat, you know, like I could see myself doing that down the line. Absolutely. Um, well, I suppose like you've been on a few practice squads in the NFL, like uh, most recently the Giants. So I, I guess having that financial advisory background probably help you because obviously, as we all know, when you're on a practice squad, you're not earning $20 million contracts. Well, for me, they they, 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 did, they did a special deal for me since I was such a highly sought after player. <laughs> <laughs> no, dry joke there. I like it. <laughs> but I you're like spot it. on. No, you got a good sense of humor. It's actually really uh, enlightening. <laughs> how does how does that? I guess that well, actually, well, that that actually does happen. I mean, no, not not a million dollar contracts. But guys on practice squad do get extra pay sometimes if the team wants them. For whoever cares to know that in the NFL, but I no, I haven't been one of those guys. But no, no, that does happen. But you're right. No, no, you're spot on about the um, money thing. I mean, I had fun. I was young, you know. Nobody's perfect, kind of thing. And I spend money maybe sometimes where I shouldn't know or whatever. But no, generally speaking, I think I did pretty well, and I was able to invest and uh, kind of have a plan. And I just think it's, um, you know, with money, it's it's so much more like uh, I think to me, it's like coaching and planning more than it is being like the savvy great investor. Like people think that to be, to build wealth in a way, there's this idea that you have to be like a Warren Buffett type and you have to see the next opportunity and you have to be like a visionary. I mean, sure that helps, but I really think that's the wrong way to kind of look about it, especially if you're a young guy that doesn't really know what you want to do. I think what really helps you, you know, what helps more is to just take it to the basics and be like, okay, what does it really mean to have 300 grand, you know? And it's like, it's easy to think 300 grand means I can buy this and this and this and this. This is what I can buy. This is what I can afford. This is the house. But whatever you should really be thinking more so, I think, is like how much will I maybe be making in the next few years, you know? How will inflation affect 300 grand, you know? How will, how will my expenses in the next five years affect that? Like, will this 300 grand inevitably be, go to zero because of all the expenses that are coming if all I do is just expend it in five years and it's kind of like 
if you work so hard, you know, I really feel passionate about this point. If you work so hard to make the NFL, to make it anywhere, kind of, and you make this big amount of money, whether it's three hundred grand, three million, thirty million, is different for every player. It's uh, it's kind of I think it's kind of a shame to just think, oh, well, I can just buy whatever I want with this three million dollars I just made because you're going to enjoy the hell out of three years, five years that you buy stuff with. Yep. But what are you left with afterwards? And if you don't have a continuing, you know, stream of income or something that you're left with for the rest of your life from a huge lump sum that you put so much effort to get to, I kind of see that as a little bit of a fail, you know, and it's, and that's each his own. Everybody lives life differently, but, and that's, that's where I had passion about financial advising, you know, down the line, maybe being able to help people with something like that and help them make, make the most of the, you know, the fruits of their labor for the long run. I've got a feeling that uh, once you hit the locker rooms, you're probably going to start talking all the financial stuff with your teammates. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I'll try my best not to do too much. Though, at the end of the day, the focus is to win, to win football games, and I, I truly, uh, it's my one priority is to go and be a, a good player and win football games. Well, that actually leads into um, one of my my favorite questions, uh, Christian. In your in yourself, what what do you bring to the DC Defenders? I bring a passionate, excited player that's committed. To you know himself, to being accountable to his team, and committed to the team, and a guy that truly you know really wants to win and really wants to get after it and make the most of this experience. Absolutely, I mean, um, passion's probably the biggest thing that I reckon a lot of you XFL players will have, especially ones like yourself that have had that taste of the NFL and sort of knows yeah. what it takes. Um, now, through your time as well, you've um, I I'd find it as frustrating if I was uh, in your shoes, but you probably not. But you've had you've had to change position a lot from uh, D line to center, DN guard. Um, has that has that helped your career, or, or do you reckon it's hindered a little bit? Uh, honestly, for sure has not helped my career. But I don't say that in a pity way at all because when I got a chance to play offensive line for the Seahawks, it was a great opportunity, and I willingly took it and. I you know would have done better at it, been more consistent. Maybe certain things uh, work differently. Uh, it would have been an awesome opportunity, and it would have been great. You know, so I don't I don't regret any of it. But no, it did not help my career. Obviously, going back and forth. Yeah, because um, you're you're naturally yeah. a defensive end out of Buffalo. Is that right? Right. Yeah, and then I played nose tackle at Buffalo too, and that's kind of where my team needed me. Like I, right now, I wouldn't play nose tackle, but yeah, that naturally, I'd say I'm a four three D tackle, three four end, even more so three four end. So. I'm just really excited to get a chance to, to play my natural position and uh, get a chance to get after it there. And yeah, the old the old line thing. I, I I'll tell you this though, and I really mean this. I learned more from offensive line than maybe anything. Period. Like it was just such a such a big challenge, such a new thing for me. I learned so much about you know even myself. You know, when you go through a big challenge, then you try and learn a new position at the program, a pro game. It's very challenging and. Uh, it teaches you. It teaches you some things. It really does, and it humbles you too. Which I think I needed a little bit of that too. But yeah. uh, and, and also, obviously, it's made me a much better football player as far as knowing the game because oh, offensive linemen they really do know the game. They have to uh, account for everybody in the box and know where everybody's going and know how it all kind of connects in that front seven. Whereas D line, it's more so you got your job and your gap, and anything else is kind of extra. Yep, absolutely. And um, a lot of people don't actually realize. But you actually played with Khalil Mack in college? I did. Yep. It was awesome to do, do that. Do you guys still keep in contact at all? A little bit. Here and there we do. Here and there. But uh, no, he was a great, 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 great guy to play with. A great teammate. Absolutely. Um, maybe you should uh, give him a call, see if he can uh, put in a good word for you at the... Um, oh, where is he now? Bears. <laughs> Chicago, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was like, I know he's not at the Raiders. They made a poor choice there. Where'd he go? <laughs> yeah, I know. The Ray, look at that. Yeah, two first round picks and whatever else. It's seems like a lot of draft picks, but it's 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 uh, people forget it's pretty damn hard to draft the cool man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and another thing as well, I actually only read this this morning. Um, you got the nickname Moose back in high school. Yes, I, yeah, I appreciate you doing a lot of research, man. Yes, you really looked me up. <laughs> I, I do try. I do try. I, I do it throughout the week, and then I I do like a creaming session an hour that's before cool. I give you a call. <laughs> um, that's nice. That's awesome. How did you? So how did the way you, I study for tests. Yes, <laughs> and I always seem I always seem yep. to pass a test when I do it like that. So I, I might there do that with go. interviews. Nice. 
So how would you get the nickname Moose? Um, coach Carter is a great football coach and a great leader for us here at Bloomfield High School. Um, he called me Moose, and that, that's where it started. And uh, I call him Moose as well. He, he's a big Moose himself. <laughs> but uh, no, he's really a great man and uh, a great leader of men. Still coaches at the high school here in Bloomfield, and he really helped me out a lot as far as uh, – just developing in high school and also, you know, as far as recruiting, he's really involved and really had my best interest in mind as far as trying to give me the best opportunity to go play college football. Yep. Okay, well, that's good. Um, I, I thought, like, I don't know, there might be some story with you and a moose behind that that might be a little bit on the illegal side. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should tell that to me. Maybe I should say me and Coach Carter were hunting and this moose came at me. And, <laughs> yeah. Had to fight it off with your bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know where that was going. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so probably the time. probably my final question there, um, Christian, and it's it's always the hardest one that I do ask if you've listened to my previous interviews. Um, but in your opinion, um, what stopped you from playing in the NFL, uh, and how how do you think the XFL will help you get back to that? Wow, that's a great question. It's an intense question too. Yeah. Well, with um, the Giants and defensive line. You know, obviously, I tore my ACL in the first game, um, and you know, I play. I have a you know a three four year career in the NFL, and I've got no defensive line film because I played you know mainly offensive line. And when I played D line, it was on practice squads where you don't really get film. No. So I think the thing that's hurt me the most is when these scouts call all the time. My agent is saying we don't want to play O line, we want to play D line, but then they look me up in the database or whatever it is, and they see no film of me playing defensive line. So. It's pretty simple for me. I get a chance to go out there and get film of me playing defensive line. Yep. If um, I suppose if the XFL stuck out another year, because as we all know, the, the, unfortunately for spring leagues, as, as fun as they are, especially me as a fan, I love them. They don't really, for some reason, they don't stick. If the XFL does break that, would you, and you got a call from the NFL, would you stay with the XFL? Oh, man, that's another intense question. Yeah. You know the answer. I only that. just thought of that one. <laughs> well, obviously, listen, let's, let's be honest. Everybody loves would love to get back to the NFL, and a big reason is because that's where the big game is. That's where the money is, and that's where the best and the best are there right now. Would I love to see the XFL continue after a year and go on to be a league that actually people care about? Yes. Could I see myself playing in the XFL for years to come and really having a great time? Yes. And I also obviously add, you know, if the XFL season goes well and I get an offer to go, you know, go to training camp with an NFL team, would I probably take that? Sure, I would. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> um, well, yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, you're all Australian. I can't try and BS you, you know. I don't know. We're pretty good at it. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. That, that was a kind of like another dry joke of mine, but I've had some good ones. <laughs> I love it, bro. <laughs> you, you're not doing uh, bad for 28 years old. <laughs> what'd you say you're not doing bad for jokes as a 28 year old so <laughs> no absolutely no nope. just gotta own them <laughs> absolutely I, I like the i like the bad jokes i'm gonna be a dad soon so i'm trying to keep all the bad jokes uh in and just let them all out <laughs> <She's here. laughs> nice congratulations man. that's awesome when are you gonna be a dad uh well my wife got induced last night so and i had to leave the hospital <laughs> I had to leave the hospital at uh, about nine, so and I'm going to head back up there after work today. Oh, okay. So, I laughed. I, my laugh was misplaced. I misunderstood what you actually said. No. It just means like she got taken to the hospital? Uh, yeah, so they do like a, I guess like a, they bring on labor kind of thing. Right, right, yes, yes, yes. I don't oh, know. Cool, I'm That's basically just there holding the snacks. Uh, so basically, you're going to be a father, hopefully, in a couple of days, maybe a week. Yeah, so days. hopefully tonight. So your t- your wow, your morning. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Congrats, man. Let put that up on Twitter, maybe if you want to. Absolutely, I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, that's it for me, Christian. Um, thanks so much for um, getting in contact with me originally, mate. Um, I, I loved I loved your story, and it's been an even better chat to have there with you. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it too. I appreciate it. Thanks and, so uh, much, mate. Congratulations, and I wish you the best for tonight and your wife. Thank you so much, mate. Good luck with everything on your end too. Thanks, man. See you. See you later. This is the answer.